Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much for your time. So we all envision a world when medicine will no longer be a physical item. What if I told you that we will one day live in a world where medicine is not going to be a physical item? And what if I told you that that day could be today? So I'm Sumbul Beg, lifestyle medicine, board certified physician, endocrinology by, by trade, but uh, I live and breathe lifestyle medicine, and that is the message I want to give you all today. And as physicians, we need to be telling our patients that lifestyle comes first. All right, everyone wants to be this, this guy in 2016, 55 years old living the best life. 55, age is just a number. This is a patient of mine, 55 years old. And to me, he looks 70. On the right hand side is me in my 30s. I had just had a baby. On the left hand side is when I turned 50. It's a power of lifestyle. Age is just a number. And we can help our patients turn back their biological age. So this is a picture of our typical Pakistan OPD. You go there, everyone's hot, tired, they're in line, but they need that magic, that magic that will get them better. They need this parchi. This parchi will give them the, the ticket to health. They can go get their medicine, finally take the medicine, and finally get better. This is what I want to say is a fallacy. This is a fallacy. This should not be the beginning of our treatment for our patients. There is a role for medicine, but it could come at the end after all the lifestyle steps have been taken. And then, yes, there, is, there are some medications which we absolutely need, but that should be after lifestyle, not as the first step. These are the six pillars, and I will go through them uh, briefly. Nasrum did a fantastic job on, on touching on all of the pillars. Social connection, we have to make sure our patients are not socially isolated. Sometimes you can be alone in a crowd. Make sure they have that social structure to help them get through the stresses of life. Stress management, Nasrum talked about, MBSR, breathing, namaz, meditation. Substance use, avoidance of risky behavior. Sleep, again, Nesrum elaborated on this, the role of melatonin, seven to eight hours of sleep mandatory. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on nutrition and exercise because out of all of the lifestyle pillars, I wouldn't say one is more important than the other, but if you have a normal BMI, more than half of your diseases will not happen. 90% of total costs worldwide, worldwide, 90% is over these eight risky behaviors, and these eight risky behaviors are lifestyle behaviors. Poor diet, physical activity, smoking, lack of health screening, poor stress management, insufficient sleep, poor standard of care, too much alcohol. Look at this, 90% of worldwide costs, 90%, we have a role to play in. Yes, there are some genetic factors. Yes, you know, at some point if there's heart failure, uh, needs, needs meds. Yes, if someone's hypothyroid, you can't lifestyle your way into a lower TSH. No, there's a role for, for the medicines, for the chemicals, but that role is 10%, 90% of total cost 
worldwide, if we start this grassroots and start getting out the message, we can actually bring the number down from 90% at least. So when, when I was told to come here, or when I was kindly invited, I was excited because I was surprised and excited that Pakistan is, is uh, embracing lifestyle medicine as a medicine. That's great. And why do we want it? Well, we want it for better outcomes and lower costs, but then also for better patient experience and better physician experience. And all physicians must start with, treatment has to start with comprehensive lifestyle behavior assessment. When the patient comes in, very briefly, go over the six pillars before we start scribbling that parchi. Just very briefly, do you sleep enough? You know, the, the driver who picked me up from the airport today, uh, when I came, I had some time, so I'll, with his permission, I asked him, that does the doctor ever tell you to sleep enough, to eat salad? And he said, nahi dekhe na, doctor hume batayega to hum phir to sunenge na. Ja, especially jab hum bimar ho ke jayenge, to agar doctor bolega to phir zahir hai hum sunenge. I said, aapko doctor ne kabhi ye bataya ke sona zaruri hai? And he, was, and he said, nahi, kabhi nahi bataya. And I said, kabhi aapko ye bataya ke palak ke patte aap khayen? And he said, jab mere, jab mujhe musibat hogi, iska gutna tuta tha. He said, us agar agar mujhe doctor kehta, bhai palak kachi khao, mein kha leta. Lekin agar aage piche kehta, mein kehta, kya pagal doctor hai, mujhe joana kachi palak khila raha hai. So, when the patient is there in your office, and he's desperate to get better, that is the time to say, listen, dude, sleep enough eat the green leaves. At that time, he will listen. That's when he will listen. Not if we do a outreach program and tell everybody, and if they don't have an incentive, they're gonna say, you know, no, you eat your kachapalik, whatever, I'm not going to. So this, you have to take advantage of that psychological moment. When they are desperate, and then you say, oh, okay, mujhe doctor ne bola. I have to do this to get my knee better. You know what the doctor told him for his knee? He said, gosht khao, ghee khao, dood piyo. This is exactly what we say not to do. And it, a little part of me inside died. And I said, we got to, we have to change the message. We have to change the message. So these are the six uh, points that I try and employ in my clinic. And box breathing is a very powerful technique to lower stress. Basically, breathe in for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds. You can go on YouTube to, to see it, but this is something that you can teach patients at least introduce the, the, the concept of breathing to them. When the doctor tells them, they will actually listen. I try and do the same. So everything I am telling you today, I practice what I preach. Reduce stress. I am an aga, avid yoga advocate. I, I meditate, I do yoga, I go through the pain of doing yoga, and then I tell my patients very honestly and passionately, do meditation, do yoga, because I just got up at five o'clock to get to my class by six o'clock, but when I do it, then I can tell my patients to do it, and they will listen. Just recently, March 3rd, on March 3rd, this report came out, more than half of the world will be overweight or obese by 2035. Half of the world, this scared me. I screenshotted it and threw it in my presentation. I said, this is such a scary statistics. Just what, a week ago? 
Doctors have to exercise and tell their patients to exercise. If doctors are not exercising, like, unko khud sharam aajayegi, ke hum inko kya bolein. And you know what? Everyone in this room is busy. Every housewife is busy. Every student is busy. But you have to make time to exercise. And when we talk about exercise, we have to do the, the, the lifestyle, active lifestyle, aerobic activity, strength and flexibility. So stretching, yoga, weights, cardio, you have to do it all. Patients will ask, okay, which is the best exercise? Honestly, it has to be everything. And we have to do everything so we can tell our patients to do everything. Even gardening. You know, in Pakistan, there's so much, so much space, little bit space, you can garden and, and, and patients can derive benefits. 500, again, March 2nd, 500 extra steps per day could reduce CV risk for adults 70 years and older. Only 500 steps. You can do 500 steps in just 10 minutes. Just, this, is a, this is a very powerful statement. 500 steps. This is a last... This, I, I have to tell you this, this blew my mind. Even when you're sitting at your desk, if you just tap your foot like this, so your soleus muscle is going up and down, and you're just, you know, so you're sitting and you're nonstop tapping your feet, even that improves glucose and lipid oxidation. All of you guys sitting here, if you start tapping your feet, so to activate your soleus muscle, yeah, just like you are, that, you don't tell me you don't have time for that while you're sitting at your desk. Start fiddling, start tapping both your feet like this. Do it, you know, feel, there you go. You do that for 15 minutes, your lipid and glucose metabolism goes up. It's, it's a mindset, we have to do it so we can tell our patients. 11 minutes brisk walk can save patients from early uh, death. Who doesn't have 11 minutes? Go on your iPhone and see how much time you spent on the screen. It'll be more than 11 minutes. 11 minutes, everybody has 11 minutes. This is my record. <laughs> so what's measured gets improved. This is my personal record. At the end of the month, I do a whole evaluation of my weight, how many hours I did yoga, how many days I rested, how many time I lifted weights, uh, how many times I did sauna, and once I measure it, then, you know, then I, I know, am I doing good, am I doing bad? So at the, on the first of the month, I do a whole inventory on my own previous month behavior, and I put it in an Excel sheet, and I just, nobody sees it but me, but now you guys have seen it too. Nusrum talked about this. This is what we, uh, this is what a healthy diet is, whole food, plant-based. Whole food meaning as close to nature as possible. Plant-based meaning not gosht. If you must have gosht, have chicken, fish, but have the apple, have the, uh, the vegetables. Try not to cook the vegetables that much. Some vegetables, of course, we should cook, but as close to nature as possible. Nuts, nuts, dal. You know, dal is a super food. Have dal every day, have dal and vegetables every day, little bit of chicken, little bit of fish, nuts. We have everything we need in this country to be healthy. Also, please, minimize your roti chawal. Chawal is just sugar, just sugar. Roti, honestly, I know you guys can't live without it. Half a roti per day, one roti per day. But please, 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 cut down on the roti javal. Again, I practice what I preach. These are my, uh, you know, pictures of my food over here in the middle. I'm packing lunch boxes for my daughter. Actually, my husband gets the same lunch box too. And I, I told him, he says, I kiddingly teased to him, he's Bhutan, he's from Northern Pakistan. Big gosh theater. So when he gets to work, um, you know, and once I kiddingly said, I said, I apologize for the healthy lunch. And he said, But this is the food he gets. 
At home, of course, he'll get a little bit of a bigger meal, but the lunch he gets every day, as per him, he says, So this is the food that I give my family, that I take to work myself, that I give my husband. And my family, me and my family, we practice what I preach. And that is why I'm standing here today so passionately telling you to do this, because this is what I am doing. These are some of my screenshots in the gym. Sometimes, twice a week, I bring my heart rate up to a good level, stress level. This is where rubber meets the road. My patient started in 2013, started at 305. This is a 65-year-old woman. She started at 305. And just now, she's down to 160. She has worked with me for 10 years. And we have brought her, she brought her weight down. You know, I guided her, but she brought her weight down at age 65 plus. She, she through lifestyle, she brought her weight down. She is almost at a normal BMI. 27 for her is fantastic. So these are the takeaways. Lifestyle is medicine. Social connections are important. Stress management is important. Stay away from risky behaviors. Sleep seven to eight hours. Be active during the day. And last but not least, you cannot outrun your fork. If you had one thing, if I allowed you to do only one thing today, I want you to do all six. But one thing I would say, decrease your weight to a BMI of 22, 23. That itself will take care of more than half of the diseases we face, that we face now a days. Thank you very much.